Welcome everybody, my name is Christian and today we're going to go over my tips, tricks, and battle tactics for Star Wars Armada Wave 1 and Wave 2 and this video is going to be on the Rebel. As I said before, I like building my fleet around my Admiral. So I pick an Admiral first and then I start building a fleet that most synergizes with that Admiral. So there are currently five Admirals in the core set Wave 1 and Wave 2. And we're going to go over them the most expensive to the least expensive. So there's Admiral Akbar at a very hefty 38 points. Mon Matha and General Rican are both at 30 points. Garm Bel Ibis is at 25 and General Dodama is at the bargain price of 20. So from what I've seen from Wave 2, Akbar is currently getting the most play in the Rebel list. And it's for a very obvious reason. He's a great admiral and he can turn even the most modest ships into something to fear. His ability allows any ship to add two red dice to their attack pool as long as they only attack from their sides. It should be noted that this additional dice does apply to both of their attacks and even applies if you attack from the same region, the same side arc twice if you have gunnery teams, which makes the already amazing assault frigate even better that you can double up on your Akbar power. The only thing that you should also note that you have to already have shots in range when the dice are added. So for example if you have a Corvette B that only has blue dice and you're at long range you can't fire just those two Akbar shots. Those two red dice have to be added to at least one pre-existing one. This is why the Corvette A's one red dice is all you need to be able to fire an unobstructed shot out and this time having three red dice. He's incredibly effective. If you think the, the most, the closest alternative upgrade card would be the enhanced armaments which for 10 points adds one red dice to each side. He adds two red dice to each side. The only catch is that you only have to fire from your sides. And depending on how many ships you get, that is a bargain for 38 points. He's getting a lot of play, and as he should. And also, with the MC-80, the new largest rebel ship in the fleet, it doesn't have an evade. The only ship that doesn't have an evade, so therefore makes Mon Matha completely useless for that ship. Hence, if you want to have an MC-80, you definitely shouldn't put Mon Motha as the Admiral of your fleet. Akbar is effective Admiral for nearly the entire Rebel fleet. The only ship I would categorically avoid him is the Nebulon B, which has incredibly weak sides. And even though you would get to do three red dice just like a Corvette, the shields there are one and there's no redirects. So even if you can dish out a little bit of damage, you're not gonna be able to take any in return. I'm a little bit less gung-ho about them with on Corvettes just because Corvettes have a two red dice front arc which you would have to not use in order to use both your side arcs, but that's a much smaller concern compared to the Nebulon B. Just as you should never use Mon Matha if you have an MC-80, never use Akbar if you have a Nebulon B. Depending on the commands and the upgrades, Assault Frigates and the MC-80s can fire an absurd amount of dice. For this reason, Akbar is best paired with those two ships. The Scott version of the MC-30 is also a good choice, but not the Torpedo Frigate for the same issue that I mentioned earlier since it only has blue dice. If you're going to have Akbar, try to have three or more ships. I've found a good combination of one MC-80, two Assault Frigates, or one Assault Frigate and one MC-30 Scout, uh, or, or, or three Assault Frigates, 
But also two MC80s would work well for it. You just try to get the most bang for your buck. Try to get as many ships using those arcs as possible. The second most popular admiral that I've seen, and commonly the most common admiral, is Mon Mothma. Her text reads, when a friendly ship resolves an evade token, it can cancel one die at medium range and re-roll at close range or distance one. So that also includes fighter attacks. Mon Mothma is still an amazing admiral. She's great on every ship other than the MC-80, and she is stellar on corvettes and the new scout and torpedo frigates both the corvettes and the mc-30 ships both have two evade tokens meaning that even with an accuracy you're probably going to be able to use her power and being able to evade those tokens at medium range or even at close range when you have a double black hit and you can go ahead and roll and try to get a blank or at least a single hit it makes a big difference and also with the new title card for foresight whenever you do a evade defense token you get to affect two dice instead of one so at medium range two dice are just gone that's amazing that's incredibly powerful synergy right there however if you do have a fleet with her, you're going to have a fleet of mostly smaller ships. So every fleet build you can imagine, other than the MC-80, she's going to be able to use. Therefore, she has a very diverse set of fleet builds. You can put her on a swarm of Corvettes and MC-30s. You could have a command assault frigate and maybe a swarm of MC-30s and Corvettes. You can even have some Nebulon Bs mixed in there that work best at long range as well due to the three fr front red dice. Every ship other than the MC-80. Tied at 30 points is the new General Regan who has the odd text ability that only helps you when you're already dead. <laughs> Which is a little bit of a defeatist strategy but I've already seen it used in really interesting ways. The text reads, when a ship or unique squadron is destroyed, it remains in the play area and is treated as if it was not destroyed until the end of the status phase. So, even if you blow up, even if you get killed, even before your activation, you get to go ahead and activate that ship just as if nothing had happened. Even if it has full damage, go ahead and try to ram another enemy ship. That way you get to do an extra damage on it. Do the firing. Now obviously he pairs best with fragile ships. The new MC-30, Corvettes, and maybe even the Nebulon Bs. These ships are all ones that are more likely to be destroyed compared to their larger assault frigates and MC-80s. So he would be a good pair with those types of ships. And of course, instead of using regular fighter squadrons, use as many named fighter squadrons as possible. Particularly ones that work better against foes that have already activated, like Wedge Antilles. So you could throw Wedge Antilles in the middle of 10 other ships, or 10 other squadrons. He gets killed, but it doesn't matter. He gets to go ahead and use his six dice against someone else. And maybe he gets to wipe out another hero after having to absorb a lot of damage himself. If you use this animal, don't expect a 10 to 0 victory, but if you want to go in guns blazing and at ramming speed, he's your choice. And for a beginner player that's a little intimidated and afraid of losing a ship, this is actually a pretty good alternative for you. The next admiral, and very very common in Wave 1, was Garmbel Ibis, which at 25 points, he has the power to give as uh, many command tokens as the command value for every friendly ship on the first and fifth turn. Just as I recommended in the Wave 2 tips, tricks, and battle tactics, it goes best with as the ships that have as many command values as possible, which currently are the Assault Frigate 
and the MC80, both of which have three commands. Now, whether or not you want to go ahead and put them on a Nebulon B or a Scout Frigate, which both have two, that's perfectly fine as well. But try to avoid the one command powers of the Corvettes. What's best to have them on those larger ships, like the MC80 and the Assault Frigate, is they're more likely to still be alive at turn 5 to be able to use his power as well. These tokens give you a lot of flexibility and there were a lot of games in Wave 1 where I took them on a fleet of Assault Frigates and being able to particularly change your speed, give yourself an extra engineering or activate one squadron at a real key moment, those were all incredibly useful. And being able to jump up to speed 3 for a Assault Frigate can usually get you out of that front arc of a Star Destroyer that's coming down on you. Or if you want to stay in that rear arc, go ahead and slow down. Make sure that you use all your tokens before turn 5 starts because you want to be able to fully utilize your advantage. Even if you don't particularly need it at that moment because you're only going to be able to collect another 3. Lastly, in the lowest point cost admiral for the Rebel Fleet currently is General Dodama. With his text ability of, before enemy ships are dealt face-up damage, look at the top four cards of the damage deck, place one on the top deck, and discard the others. Something of note, unlike all other admirals, both Rebel and Imperial alike, his power affects squadrons or even critical damage caused by asteroid collisions and mines. If you want to build a rebel bomber fleet, Dodama is a great choice. He also pairs particularly well with Luke since Luke bypasses shields and with his text ability if he scores a critical hit with that black dice that he rolls you'll be able to choose the most damaging of the four critical effects that you roll up. That way, early on, even if that ship has full shields, it can suddenly get a structural damage or a coolant leak or have its shields fail for the rest of your fighters to go in and attack. If you have Luke activate it with a bunch of other squadrons, always have him go first because you never know what that critical effect is going to do to that enemy ship. Damo's Pride, which is a Corvette title upgrade, is also a good pairing with him since you get to cause one face-up damage immediately once you get a blue critical, bypassing all defense tokens and shields. So once again, you get to do that face-up damage and you get to choose what it is. And also with Wave 2, he pairs well with Assault Proton Torpedoes, which at only 5 points whenever you get a black critical, deal one face up damage card immediately to the holder even so that way it's, again like Luke it bypasses shields you just do one additional face up critical so if you have him with a fleet of the new MC 30s you have those new uh, assault proton torpedoes and some rebel bombers you can do some really damaging attacks and of course if you're ever going to do him, choose minefields as your objective because those criticals will also be affected by your power. So you can get a huge amount of synergy for only 20 points and be able to get a really large rebel fighter fleet with him. So once I pick my admiral, I start pairing my ships. And at, at, that we've already discussed a little bit, but I'm going to go over each of the ships in both Wave 1 and Wave 2 and the things that I like about them. So the l only large ship currently in the Rebel fleet is the MC-80, which has huge, powerful side arcs that, as I said before, pair well with Admiral Akbar. Unfortunately, there's no gunnery teams that you're able to put on this ship, and it's a huge downside compared to the Assault Frigates, which you get to fire from the same arc twice. Was strong advantage of both the command cruiser and the assault cruiser is that you get to use a defense token slot 
either one on the command cruiser or two on the assault cruiser. I can't recommend highly enough. Every MC-80 should have an electronic countermeasures on your ship. When it gets a full blast from an Imperial Star Destroyer and it's doing six or eight damage you and has the accuracy, you need to have the electronic countermeasures to make sure that you can use your brace. Your brace is the only token that you have on this ship that actually gets rid of damage. You have two redirects which are useful, but it, it doesn't lower the total number of damage that's being fired on your ship. For seven points, and you're guaranteed to be able to have a slot on both versions of the ship, please put electronic countermeasures on there. As I mentioned before, it has two redirect tokens and very powerful shields, and that is great. It ha only has a hole of eight, which compared to the Star Destroyer's 11 makes them a little bit more vulnerable, but its shields are even stronger. Keep up with the engineering tokens and keep on recharging those shields. With the engineering value of four, you'll be able to recharge at least two shields per turn. If you have Antilles on there, you'll be able to get an extra defense token, which will mean three shields per command. Or consider redundant shields, and then that way you're consistently adding an additional shield. Another thing that I love about the MC-80 is that it has amazing title cards <laughs> that are very useful, particularly Home 1 and Defiance. Home 1 is if another ship is at distance 1 through 5 and is attacking, you may change one die to a face with a accuracy icon. If you're using Akbar and you're giving all your ships an extra two red dice, red dice are, with that many red dice, you're probably going to get a blank. And so you can turn one of those blanks into an accuracy. I just played a game which will probably already be posted at this point where for the first few shots of my assault frigate I never had a blank because even if I did get a blank my home one was able to turn it into an accuracy and I was doing really damaging shots to gladiators by taking away their brace token. The next and at seven points it's a pretty good price at only five points Defiance is also an update that I really like while attacking a ship that's already activated this round, add one dice of any color to your attack pool. So it actually adds to your attack pool. So at any range, you can still add a black or a blue dice depending on your choice. Obviously, don't add a red. That doesn't make any sense because you can get a blank. At five points, it's a great upgrade particularly if you have a large number of ships and you'll be able to determine activation order. Ideally, try to have three ships if you're gonna use this upgrade because that way you know you'll be able to wait it out and allow your target ship to go first. The last title upgrade, which I haven't used yet and I haven't seen used yet, but has some potential, is the Independence. Each squadron you activate may increase its speed to four, but it cannot attack during this activation. So essentially, this is the B-Wing carrier. You get to activate, and instead of only moving at the miserable two that B-Wings are, it makes them much faster and gets them up to speed four. However, they can't attack that turn, so this is really like a turn one, turn two, get them in position type of maneuver. But if you really love your B-Wings, this is probably the uh, title upgrade that you want to use. But unfortunately, I haven't seen that many B-Wings being used. If you want to use a carrier, obviously go with the MC-80 Command Cruiser. The only trade-off is that it has more blue dice than red dice, which for the reduction in points, I've seen it more than worthwhile. With the assault, uh, with the offensive slot, you can go ahead and give yourself boosted comms for only four points. 
and be able to have more flexibility on the battlefield. So I prefer the command cruiser a little bit more than assault cruiser, but I re you could really argue either one. Next is the assault frigate. The hero of wave one and a, still an amazing ship in wave two. The assault frigate pairs well with Garm and Akbar due to its three command tokens and having those large side arcs. I love using these large, powerful side arcs at three red dice. It has as many red dice as the MC-80 for a much lower price. And you get to have gunnery teams. In, in a 400 point world now, you're way more likely to be able to have two targets to shoot at at the same time. And with those side arcs, it's probably going to be those side arcs. It can go up to speed three. It's the, the B version, which is probably the way more common one right now, has a squadron value of three, which is great. And only trades off a single blue dice in the front, in the rear, and in your anti-squadron compared to the more expensive Mark II A. So for this reason, I would favor with Wave 2, particularly if you have Akbar, to always go with the Mark II B because you get to have that extra squadron value and you're only going to be firing from your side arcs anyway, so why pay for the extra just to get an additional front and rear blue dice? Gunnery Team is particularly useful. I use them, I include it in every non-carrier build. And just like the MC-80, electronic countermeasures is incredibly important. And I essentially use it as auto-include because you got to have that brace token when those Star Destroyers are coming up against you. As much as I love this ship, the title upgrades for this are completely useless. And I'm not even going to bother talking about them because I've never seen them be useful. With the offensive upgrade slot, Boosty Comms is also a cheap upgrade if you're planning on using them as a carrier. The next Wave 2 ship is the MC-30, which comes in a scout and torpedo configuration, which essentially swaps red dice for blue dice. The scout frigate pairs particularly well with both Akbar and Mon Matha. However, the torpedo frigate pairs better with Mon Matha and Rikin because the Torpedo Frigate doesn't have any base red dice, and so it can only use those red dice at medium and close ranges. Foresight for the Scout Frigate is essentially an auto-include. It's only eight points, and it gets you to remove two red dice instead of just one whenever you use an Invade, which you have two of, and it allows you to redirect to two whole zones rather than just one. So essentially a cheaper version of advanced projectors and an evade boost for only eight points. If you have a scout frigate, always include it. However, the torpedo frigate actually probably pairs better with the title A Domination, which allows you to use those evade tokens. You have to get rid of them, but it takes away those dice. If you're getting in close, you're not going to be able to use those evades anyway, unless you have Mon Matha. Even if you do have Mon Matha, a domination allows you to discard a defense token even if you've already used it. So if you're going in there and you're about to face death but you want to knock them out, go ahead and use your evade or use your redirect and then discard it. And then that way you'll be able to use it essentially twice rather than discarding a fresh green one. It's a great ship. It's a little fragile with only a hole of four, but it has amazing shields. Essentially the same shield makeup as an assault frigate at a much lower price. Assault proton torpedoes are particularly good on it, as well as assault concussion missiles. However, I'm, I'm leaning towards the assault proton torpedoes just because of the cheaper price 
and you feel like you're less invested in making sure you're getting those black die. And unlike assault concussion missiles, with ships with larger shields, you're guaranteed a critical damage face-up card with assault um, torpedoes, particularly if you have Dodama as your admiral. With two evade tokens, turbo laser reroute circuits are also a good option with this ship, allowing you to guarantee you a double hit or a critical, and if it's the last ship to go, or you don't think you're going to need both of your evade tokens, it's a great option. The last two ships are the ships from the core set, the Krillian Corvette and the Nebulon B. Krillian Corvette, as mentioned before, pairs great with Mon Mothma and Rican. But you could also utilize Akbar as well, but not as well. It pairs well with Turbo Laser reroute circuits due to its two evade tokens. Normally I go for the A version, and Janus Light at only two points is a great addition, particularly if you have a large fleet and you're expecting to get obstructions. Janus Light is also useful because you can keep the ship further out of the fight or even intentionally stay obstructed. Even between your own ships, maybe you put your admiral on it or maybe you just want to keep it safer and have it hide behind something else. If you have Janus Light, try to stay obstructed as much as possible because whenever your enemy fires back at you, they're going to lose a dice and you're not. And at two points, it's a great choice. For Model B, always put on Adama's Pride. Obviously, you can only do that for one of your ships, but for the same price as a Model A, you get a Model B with Adama's Pride. Even if you don't have Adama as your Admiral, doing a face-up critical is always a good thing. The Nebulon B my least favorite ship. It's fragile, it has huge vulnerable sides, it doesn't have a redirect. It's If you are going to use it, use it as a sniper. It's, be, it's best at speed one and face your enemy directly. Go ahead and save up a navigate token and then that way you can boost up to speed two or speed three once you're about to collide with them, but never never play chicken with it. If you're going to go towards that ship, it's better for you to ram and keep on taking a damage rather than turn and have your side face that front arc of a Star Destroyer. So if you're going to use it, keep it at speed one, keep it in long range as long as you can, and then if you have good timing, jump it to speed three by using an order and that navigate. Or if you have Antilles, you'll be able to do that whenever you do a Navigate token. Now what's interesting about this ship is even though it's my least favorite, it arguably has the most useful title cards. Yaris, Salvation, and Redemption all make the Nebulon B almost usable for me. <laughs> Each one of them has it be in a completely different situation. Redemption, by boosting the engineering stats of all friendly ships, is a ship that you want to keep out of direct combat, but boost all your other ships, and maybe even put projection experts on it, and just have it be a buffing machine that you spent that points for. Salvation, on, on the other hand, is a perfect long-range sniper, and would also be a great pairing with slaves turrets which give you one more red dice but you can only fire from one arc however if you're using the nebulon b correctly you're only going to be firing from that front arc unless you're also doing an anti-squadron roll if you're ever going to use a nebulon b at least give it one of its titles depending on how you want to use the ship because it's the only way that it is useful for most situations, the Nebulon B support refit is a better option because unless you're using it as a carrier because it still gets those three front arcs, it's six points less, and it just loses one of its squadron values. 
So for most of those ships, go ahead and do the support refit, particularly the Salvation. You can use the more expensive Escort frigate for Yarvis, which makes it a carrier. And actually does well with named hero fighters. Because if you get to attack them twice, you just as well have them be incredibly powerful. Also, if you throw Antilles on there, you'll be able to boost your squadron value from 2 to 3 using the token. Or you can pair them with Adar Talon and be able to use that hero squadron up to four attacks so it gets a little expensive but if you're going to go for a carrier one that's how you're going to synergize it the most now let's go over the rebel officers some of which i've already mentioned the first rebel officer and my favorite is ramses and tilly's he's seven points but whenever you reveal a command you get a matching command token for that so for every engineering value, you go ahead and get an engineering token. Whenever you do navigate, even if you use your navigate, you get a navigate token. It boosts the squadron value of every ship by one, making it a command cruiser of the MC-80 be able to activate five squadrons instead of just four. He's essentially an engineering team, an expanded hangar, and so many other things, all, all whenever you use it. If you spend the five points expanded hangar, you only get that benefit when you use a squadron command. If you have an engineering team, you only get that benefit when you do an engineering command. With Antilles, you get a benefit for whatever command you order. And he's great. Put him on your flagship. It will keep it much more survivable by being able to give yourself more engineering, more navigates, get the reroll misses, put them on your flagship. I don't know why more of my opponents are doing this, but I'm letting the secret out. Use Antilles. The next one, which for Wave 2, is Whalex Wissex. You, you have to discard this card, but you get to recover one of your discarded defense tokens. It's five points, and you only get to use them once, but he could save your bacon when you really need it. If you're going to invest those points, maybe put them on an MC-80 or an Assault Frigate, and when you have to burn that brace, you get to go ahead and get it right back. Or you can put them on the uh, Abomination, and you could use your evade, then discard it to get rid of another dice, and then use this card and you get it all back again. It's I haven't seen them all that much, but if you want to put them on a ship that you really don't want to lose, it's a it's a good um, it's a it's a good tactic. Adar Talion is expensive at ten points. But at 10 points, you can almost buy an additional A-Wing. However, he's a good pairing with an expensive hero like Nin, Luke, Kalen Farlander, all of those really expensive ships. You get to go ahead and activate them twice whenever you do a squadron command. And he doesn't get exhausted. You just toggle him, and so you get to do one of your powerful hero squadrons twice. If you're going to put him in your fleet, try to have at least one hero, preferably two if that hero dies, and that way you'll get the most out of your money. Leah Organa is a cheap insurance card to avoid foolish ship commands. She's best used for newer players to the game that could be put on a Corvette that can essentially change the command dial of larger ships on demand. Once you become more experienced, even at the three points, I don't think she's worth it. Lando Calrissian, I'm very disappointed with. I like Lando Calrissian. However, you can really only use his card in the absolute last ditch before you die. It's, once again, a discard, which I don't like using normally. 
And all it does is re-roll one or more dice of your choice. So if he, your opponent rolled really well and you're going to die, go ahead and use that card and it won't remove those dice. It will just allow you to re-roll them. Maybe you still die anyway and you wasted four points in an officer slot. So I wish he was cooler, but he's definitely not. Even with Wave 2, I think A-Wings are still the best squadron for their price. At 11 points, at speed 5, counter 2, and a single black dice versus ships, they really are a bargain. Tycho is also pretty good, and is still the only rebel hero with Scatter, which is really useful compared to a Brace, because it gets rid of all damage. X-Wings are also are, are great and they're even better than they were before with five life four blue dice and the escort ability they're becoming more useful now that there's more things to escort with the base game there was nothing for you to escort because it was only x-wings all of which had their own escort in wave one you had y-wings that had a life of six they were even higher that you wouldn't necessarily want to absorb the damage for anyway. And A-Wings had the counter, so you would want them to take the damage in order to dish attacks back out. And B-Wings, again, were also very tough. And you necessarily don't want to uh, soak up that damage as well. However, now with other bombers like Havoc, the Millennium Falcon, and particularly Jan Ors, Using those X-Wings to absorb that damage is starting to make more sense. Luke is still a great hero, even with all this time, and avoiding shields, particularly on those really large Star Destroyers, is always a good option. Wedge is okay, but for the extra points, he only has a situational power. Y-Wings are still a great option at 10 points and a single black dice and 6 life and a speed of three, they're a very viable ship. And if they're paired with Jan Ors or X-Wings, they're very survivable and you're probably gonna be able to get them to their target. They also have two blue dice against squadrons, which isn't, isn't that bad. And the hero version, Dutch, is actually with his three blue dice and his text ability, to toggle the activation slider of an enemy that takes any damage, that's a really good power that can be used in several situations. If Wedge is nearby, you can go ahead and have Wedge hammer him with six blue dice, or if it's an expensive enemy unit that hasn't gone yet, you can just take away their turn. You can hit a Darth Vader or slave one and make sure and have them avoid being able to activate. You don't have a hundred percent chance of doing that text ability, but more often than not, you're going to be able to do that. B wings are still underrepresented in the Rebel fleet just because they're too darn slow. At speed three, you would see them all the time, but at speed two, they're just too slow. However, their blue and black dice is really good, and the hero's two black dice is particularly nasty, especially since he can re-roll them against areas that don't have shields. They're great ships for everything but their speed, and they're relatively expensive. I just don't see them getting much play now with there's so many Wave 2 options. Nim's Havoc text ability is not guaranteed, but it is devastating when it takes place. I wish he had Rogue, but for 21 points, he's a really good bomber. He's a blue and a black, but if you get that blue critical, you get to discard a defense token of your choice. If you want them never to be able to use that brace again, go ahead and take it away. You only have a 25% chance of getting that blue critical, but I've seen it used and I've seen them getting that on their first turn and really ruining shot for that Imperial player for the rest of the time. The Scourge H6 Bomber, which is the non-hero version, is just a slightly faster B-Wing and isn't all that particularly interesting. 
Han Solo is very unique and a very powerful dogfighter and a pretty decent non-bomber bomber, if that makes sense. His rogue is fun and he gets the ability to activate himself during the ship phase so he'll always be the, uh, the first squadron to activate and you get to have him shoot first. The base YT-1300 is a slow heavy X-Wing but it has Escort and Counter-1. I could see it getting some play, especially when paired with Jan Ors and maybe some of those slower B-Wings that you want to get to the battlefield. The Millennium Falcon has two blue and two black attack dice, but it doesn't have the bomber, so it won't be have its criticals count. Dash Rangar is a heavy puncher with four blue dice and one black dice for his bomber ability. And he also has the rogue ability and his bomber. It's very similar to the Millennium Falcon, but with being rogue and bomber and still having six health, it's pretty darn useful at a lower price. The YT-2400 also has four blue anti-squadron and one black dice. It's not a bomber, but still has its rogue ability, even though it's just a base version of the ship. Jan Ors, as mentioned before, pairs very well with ships that have escort, like X-Wings, because her power allows her to use other ships to use her defense tokens, and she also provides them intel, making any other squadrons heavy around you. So she can escort those bombers to their targets and have X-Wings defend her because she only has a life of four. And unfortunately, from my own personal experience, she can go down with a few targeted hits as well as some lucky anti-ship squadron attacks. At 19 points, she's particularly useful and she was able to give my other squadrons a few extra turns by giving out those brace tokens and unlike every other time you use a defense token they can't accuracy these tokens because they're shooting at something else but you're giving them the tokens so you'll always be able to use those braces even if they're being accuracy for this reason she actually does well even when using it with other heroes that have their own tokens if they get accuracy they can use hers. You're gonna see her paired pretty often. I like her a lot. She's not perfect, but she's pretty useful. Thank you all of you for listening. I hope this has been able to help you with your rebel tactics. If you have any other suggestions that I missed out, please leave in the comments below. And are there any other pairings that I didn't mention that you found useful as well? Thank you and goodbye.